In this video, we're going to be talking about the different text options you have within PowerPoint 2016. So right here, it's pretty obvious that we're working with the title slides. So we could go ahead and type some different text in here for the title of our presentation. Let's just call it presentation for kicks here. But let's say that 60 font size isn't actually big enough, or maybe you want to change the type of font you're using here. Well, that's very easily doable. You can click on the font size drop down menu up here in the top left and increase it, or you could even drop it down. Though with the title, you probably don't want it that small. So just set it back to 60. An even easier way you can increase and decrease it is by hitting the increase font size and decrease font size buttons. These are of course located right to the right of the font size drop down. And when you hit these, it'll just jump to the next spot on this drop down list. So if you have 60 font size and you increase it, it goes to 66 and we can demonstrate that then to 72 and uh, same in the opposite direction as well. Now as for the font choice itself, it's going to default to Calibri Lite within PowerPoint. Uh, but there are many different options here that you can use and you can see that you can actually set a default for the heading and one for the body as well. On any typical Windows installation, Windows 7 or above, you're going to see most of these default fonts as an option within Microsoft PowerPoint and the other software solutions you have on your computer. Of course, you can always go online to sites like defont.com to find more fonts if you're looking for something a little bit more artistic, but the fonts that they provide here are plenty for most purposes. Just like most other software that allows you to manipulate text, you're going to have your default tools, including bold, italics, underline, and over here you have text shadow, drawing a line or strike through your text. Something that you may not have seen before, though, is the character spacing options. So for every character in a sentence or, well, a piece of text down here, like a paragraph, you can actually reduce the space between the characters or increase it. So you can see we put it very tight and it gets very condensed together, or you could put it very loose and then there's just a lot of white space between each character as it gets printed. To the right of that, you have several different options for controlling casing for words, such as every character being lowercase, regardless of how you typed it in, uppercase, or you could capitalize each word, which may be good for titles. And now, of course, this isn't necessary at all. You can always just type the characters as you intend it to be shown. Over here to the right, you have the standard alignment tools, including align left, center, right, and justified. So I've gone ahead and typed some text in here to demonstrate what Justified actually does, distributing the text evenly between the margins. You see over here on the left that not all of the text is lined up and over here on the right as well, Justified tries to fix that. So when we hit Justified, it's going to ideally make it so that all the text lines up on the left correctly and all of the text lines up on the far right wherever the margins are. Distributed, the final option is similar, but what it will do differently is actually add in extra spacing between the text if it's necessary to get the evenly lined up uh, text over here on the far right where the margins are at and over here on the far left. So let's go ahead and hit that. And you can see even going beyond justified, it'll make it so that every single line, even the last one where there's only a few characters, lines up as evenly as possible. And it does that by adding in the blank white space. As soon as you start creating PowerPoints, you're almost certainly going to be using numbered lists and bulleted lists. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that really quickly on a new slide by right clicking over here on the left and going to new slide. Now here, they've actually already created a uh, bulleted list, which just goes to show you how crucial lists are to PowerPoint presentations. Um, you can, of course, disable that bulleted list that's already there just by clicking up here. Uh, you know it's using a bulleted list because it'll be highlighted here when you are selecting on an area that has a bulleted list. And we can change that easily to a numbered list instead uh, by clicking over here to the right. Now, whenever you have a bulleted item typed out and you want to go to the next item in the list, you want to create the number two or the second bulleted point, all you need to do is hit enter on your keyboard and it will immediately jump down to a new line where you can type in the second element and enter for a third one. So it's very simple to use bulleted lists and do keep in mind that the items in the list still have all of the text rules applying to them so we can center this piece of text just by hitting the center alignment and we can change the font just as easily and so on and so forth. 
Now let's say that when you're working with Microsoft PowerPoint 2016 that you want to create another one of these little boxes here. You know they have ones by default that you work with on every new slide, but let's say you want another one. Maybe you want to put a note off to the side. All you need to do is go over here to the drawing section and click on a text box or a vertical text box if you want the text to be typed from top to bottom. So let's go ahead and click on text box over here. Now to create the text box, find an empty space left click, hold it down, and then drag and drop your rectangle. And that will be the boundaries for your text box. Just like the default text boxes, you can start typing in information, you can align it to the center if you want, or you could create a list. Another place that you can actually Another place that you can actually create these text boxes, though, is on the insert tab. Over here, you will see text and above text are going to be five or six options. One of them is text box. You can click on the drop down menu to select vertical text box, but it defaults to horizontal. That's usually what you're going to use. And it works exactly the same way as the drawing section. A couple other options that are available to you here on the insert tab are headers and footers. So we can add in a header or footer just by clicking here. Now, when you open up the header or footer dialog, you're going to have some defaults, which will show on this slide, including date and time. You check that if you want it to show, and it will show in the bottom left hand corner. If you want to have some custom footer notes, you can do that by clicking footer right here and typing in some information like the word slide or something like that. And slide number is going to show in the bottom right hand corner if you check that. Now, if you so choose, which may be a good idea, you can exclude the information from the title slide, which may be a good idea because on the title slide, you really just want to tell people what the presentation is about and maybe who is presenting. But that's it. You don't want that extra information there. You can see that headers aren't going to appear on this slide by default, but you can add them to notes and handout pages. So a note or handout page is going to be where you actually print out the slides. Um, possibly one at a time or possibly several to each page. And then on each of those pages, they're going to have their own header or footer. And you can add in the header information by clicking here and typing in whatever you want it to show on each page. And the same for the footer. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how the header would look like if we were to actually do a preview of a print. So once again, if you're just printing the slides out, you're not going to see the note or header information you only will see that if you are actually printing out note pages or the outline of your PowerPoint presentation. So if we click on note pages here in the print layout, you'll see that the header that says slide is actually going to show and the same with the outline. So as one last fun text related thing for this video, let's talk about word art really quickly. So if you want text to be somewhere on your PowerPoint presentation, but you want it to look a little bit different than your regular text, maybe you just want it there to look a bit artistic, stand out, or just kind of fun, you can click on the word art drop down and you'll be given some different options that all look pretty nice, honestly, where you can just take text and put it somewhere on your PowerPoint presentation to make it look kind of fun, kind of artsy, kind of stand out. So for instance, if we click over here on this gold gradient one, it will be given a text box that we can immediately start editing, uh, very similar to just regular text. When you're using word art inside of PowerPoint 2016, you're given some extra options in the form of shape styles and word art styles. So if we wanted to change the border and the background of this text box, we could do so over here in the shape styles box. For instance, we could change the border by selecting this option with a red border. If we want one that actually has a background color, we can scroll down, perhaps changing it to a green background. And if you want to customize each element individually to whatever colors you want, you can click on shape fill for the background color or shape outline for the border. If you want the text to stand out a little bit more, what you can do is a shape effect. So we could, for instance, give it a glow where this entire text box is going to have a glow instead of just a normal border. Uh, we could add a shadow to it, kind of looking similar to a drop shadow. For instance, I could put it as this bottom right hand corner one. That's usually what I would use if I was doing any kind of text manipulation. If you want to customize the text itself, you got to go over here to word art styles. We can, for instance, change the color of the text filling the outline of the text. You notice that the uh, text itself does have a border and you can change that with the text outline. For instance, let's make it red here. 
And you can add text effects very similar to the shape effects, but instead they're going to directly manipulate the text. So for instance, a bevel, if you want your text to be a lot more 3D, you could add a glow. Or you could add in a reflection effect to make it look like it's mirroring itself right below the text. So you should get the idea here with word art. It allows you to play around with your text and make it stand out a lot more than just having regular text that's black and has no background behind it. But I would say when you're making PowerPoint presentations that you should use this lightly. It's not something you want to go overboard on because having these text boxes can be a little bit distracting if you use it too often. So that's all for this video on text within PowerPoint 2016. Till the next video, I will see you then.